Oak branch with leaves and acorns. This is the branches part. All I'm doing here is putting the light texture in them. Uh, black heat. Uh, I don't even really want the texture to be uh, very prominent. I have a master sign. There it is. So yeah, the only real texture in, in these branches are the the nubs, what I like to call them. Sticking out. I was going to just show one branch, but I think get a better idea of what's going on. You see a couple of them. Or in this case, uh, most of them. I think I had one already made from the previous night. Uh, these hammers, they're just Harbor Freight hammers. They're good steel. Uh, I try to get them when they're real cheap. And I can texture. Texture with them. Or reshape them. They forge well. They harden in oil. And for five bucks, it's just as easy for me to get that than it is to go to eBay and buy a block. I have been repurposing the small ball peens. I have a punch, a butcher, and a hot cut. We'll see how long the edge lasts on the hot cut. I don't know. So far it's held up. It's a it's a pretty fat angle. So it wouldn't be good for cutting anything too thick. It would take forever. But so far it works out okay. Yeah, all I'm doing is, is texturing. I'm not even really bending the branches. That's more later. Any bends or twists in them are going to come from forging. So I, I don't bother. I just leave them then. I give them a brush with my brass brush. Give them a little bit of color here and there. Wasn't sure what I wanted to color them. Or how? I didn't know if I wanted to use uh, the famous blacksmith goop or just paint them. And it turns out after I did this, I realized that I could copper plate them. But it would have been, uh, I think, pretty expensive. I've got the copper. That's not the problem. The problem would have been a container to hold the entire tree branch in. It would have been a lot easier to do it with the branches like this than assembled. This design, it's really the only thing it calls for are copper leaves. So, I don't know. I, I think if the whole tree branch would be would have been copper and the acorns and the... The stems, I, I just think that would have been too much. We'll see. Like I said, it's a black heat. It's barely enough to make an imprint. I don't want the imprint deep at all. In fact, I want it to be able to be almost brushed out. Now that that brass brush is the worst brush I've ever bought. Um, nothing comes off of it. 
I wonder how much brass was actually plated onto the bristles. I've had good ones, and I've had bad ones. Giving my blacksmith's helper there a test fit before I get to it. Now the idea with these was to upset the ends, the the the, the big ends, and put a tenon on them. Punch a hole in the main branch. Throw the tenon through it, peen it over, and forge walled it. So the night before I did this video, before I let the fire die out, I gave that a shot. And it was fine. It would have worked. But I don't know how I would have done successive branches. Uh, it was just too, the idea was not what reality was. It, with the branches all spread out in different directions, I don't think I could have even gotten it into the forge where the heat was to do some of the welds. So, I want to relight on the welder. My blue tongs. I've repurposed those tongs three times. They will not die, and I always find a use for them. I ended up, I also, yeah, I ended up making a replacement pair for those. Because I just thought, they're at the end of their life. But, I ended up using the replacement pair for what those were intended on and then I just kind of use these as a utility tong for small things it's funny how you have ideas about something and and the material that you make it out of has different ideas than what you have There was one branch attached. I think. Oh, that was how it was going to be. Of course, everything's on the fly here, so. In case you're wondering about dimensions, I would encourage you to use your eyes. Look at my fingers compared to that main stock. Or, or that pencil compared to the main stock. If you want to know what those dimensions are, it's a little bit bigger than a pencil. This is the first time I've narrated a video. It takes a little getting used to. It's weird. I see stuff that I, I've, I've looked at this video in editing six times, maybe. <laughs> and I still never saw the things that I see when I'm talking. And I think that's pretty much how I'm going to be doing it. 
in the future. I can't talk and work at the same time. Note to self, wrong tool. I bought that to act as a small a small drift to open small holes. It was within reach. It's definitely not a hot work tool. I checked the end of it. The end's okay, but... I'm probably going to have to harden and temper it again. I would imagine. If it gets stuck like that, it's usually because the bottom increases in size. In other words, it's hot enough to deform. And when, when you do something like that, it naturally is going to deform. Now we're going to upset. I have to pardon my camera setup. You can leave it a little, uh, you know, like it's like it's doing right now. You can leave it like that, except if you're going to make a tendon, a tenon, it's a little hard to twist that thing in a circle or circular motion. So you're probably better off bending it like that after you make the tenon, but it doesn't really matter. You can straighten it. Just trying to get enough bulk on this end so that when I make the tenon, there's actually a difference in diameters. They use a couple different dies to do this. I was just going to use the flat dies, but I want to see what I, I've only got three shapes here and I'm but I didn't know if the smallest one was capable of making a tenon small enough but it turned out it didn't but I don't know if I show it what I do is I replace the bottom die with the flat die there on the anvil and what that does is it has the tendency to make your diameter half of what it was. So if, if let's say that's a quarter of an inch, which is bigger than that, but I mean smaller than that. But if it's a quarter of an inch and that's the smallest thing you have, and you replace that bottom die with a flat die, you can get that down to an eighth of an inch. So in reality, oh, it, it, it's not quite as, I mean, it works. It's nicer if, if both your dies are round because you have to work a little bit at it to make sure you don't go too far and turn it into a flat. But at the same time, with a little bit of work, you could, you could make a whole series of holes and then using the flat die have a whole nother series of with the same die just by changing the flat clean it up a little bit Yeah, I went a little wild with that blue paint.
the fit was good enough. It was tight enough. But I thought if I heated that up, I could get a little better fit. By the time I'm done dumbing around here. Generally, I don't do a whole lot of editing. I just don't care to. I don't really have that much time to. I'll cut out spots where, uh, you know, I'll go to the garage for 10, 15 minutes. Or I might have to be called away for something. Um, then, yeah, I'll cut that blank out. But sometimes you might see this camera sit and look at the anvil while I'm waiting for the steel to heat up. My old pink slack tub. I'm just trying to get the edge of the second branch down so that it could be now, this is where I was still going to forge weld it, but there I also started thinking about the fact that I wasn't going to be able to do all the branches if I did. I guess it makes you think about how you assemble things. I would imagine that instead of having a main branch with all the other branches hooked into its side, if you had, if you had so that you would, the main branch would be divided into sections. And you, oh boy, I don't even know how you do that. That'd be a pain. Yeah, never mind. I was thinking of a Christmas tree. There, the, the branches hook into it, but at the same time, the main stem of the branch, or the main stem of the tree, the main branch that running up the middle is also in sections. Might be able to, that might be easier to get into the forge to forge world. Well, that would be a lot of work though. I don't even know if that'd be worth it. I leave these things sticking out quite a ways because I know that in, in for this purpose, this will work. It's not quite like making a rivet, but it's somewhat like making a rivet. Normally, you know, you're gonna you're not gonna stick that end out so far. But for this kind of thing it worked okay. Just trying to find a smaller a smaller hole that I can stick that in but it actually worked best at the end. I think. I'm going to be remaking this tool um, into a tool that absolutely will hold your round stock from moving. I just have other things more important right now. Fast, tiny taps, light taps. You don't need to kill that.
Just put all your irons in the fire and pull each one out and work on it. That worked out really well. Tap, 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 tap. Those did end up in a nice shape there at the bottom. If they were to just be stuck on. But unfortunately, to make that tenon, it's nice to be able to rotate that branch in your fingers. And when they're bent like that, it's kind of hard. I don't show the step, but then I, I take these and I roll them across the top of the anvil and I gently tap on the, say what, what would be like the, the head to kind of give it a slight flat all the way around. Don't want to start too small or you'll put cuts in your tenon. Kind of see there where I had a little trouble turning it because it's not straight. I'm going to be remaking this tool too. I finally got some half inch plate. Those are 5 eighths dies. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make a C frame. I think that way I can get in both directions. That would be nice. I do want to save those dies though. I like working with O1. Nice, deliberate taps. Once you get your shape, then you can whack at it, but whack slow, slow and hard. To get that shape, whack light and often. <laughs> I'm just going to let that thing bend, ain't I? I don't know if I could have picked them up. I might have been able to. 
it's hard to tell. Later on, when I'm messing with the branches and the leaves, a few times I burnt my forearm just brushing against the far end of one of those branches, which I didn't even realize was warm. kinds of stuff in this I've not not either not done before or not done often and wasn't sure it would work but they actually worked really well and I learned a few things from it I don't know how many people out there know that you can solder steel and I don't mean braise it, I mean solder it. The only reason I say that is because I was recently looking in a forum. And I can't tell you how many people I saw tell somebody who was asking a question. Uh, that you couldn't solder steel. It had nothing to do with what I was looking up. What I was looking up was copper plating. I don't even know how <laughs> I don't even know how that forum ended up talking about that, but yeah. And this poor guy wanted to know how to solder steel. And so many people told him, you can't do that. You gotta braise it. You're wrong. This is where I used the flat dies, and I just used them to make the diameter smaller. Yeah, that's not going to stay on its own there, bud. I was having a heck of a time with that hold down. Holding that round rod and not rotating it as you tighten it up. Until I cut a tiny groove you can see it there it almost looks like a, a pry bar end I cut a tiny groove there all the way down the middle and I've, I'm gonna do it across the other direction too but boy it sure holds it nice I think that I think that hold down is mild steel. And I've got it in my hardy hole. Yeah, there we go. A little warm there, isn't it? I hit that tail. That's the only time you're going to see me move fast. Yeah, I should have cut a groove in there then. I never thought about that, cutting it. Cutting a perpendicular one, too. Down. 
<laughs> yeah, she's going to have to be reheat treated. I'm sure. I've still got uh, five feet of S7. And I need to make some more punches. I think that my S7 is three quarter inch. And I was kind of saving that for bigger stuff. It's obvious I need something small, too. I mean, I've got a ton of punches, but a lot of them just sit in the same can, never being used. go. Couldn't have done that beforehand, could you? <laughs> Slow and steady. Yeah, I decided I needed a slack tub, a nice one. So I took a trip down to the salvage yard. I didn't find one. Met a guy who was dropping off a bunch of car parts. So I got two, two sets of leaf springs off this guy. I was like, don't, don't bother throwing that out, I'll take them. So I took those. And he had happened to mention seeing some stainless steel in a place there that I had never seen stainless steel. So I walked around the crane, and right there in front of me were like five, maybe six. There were some other things, but I don't think they were containers. I don't know. But there was like five containers, um, 38, 40 inches tall. By 14 inches in diameter. Martinistic stainless steel. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> for 15 bucks, I got a, a really nice uh, slack tub. I should have got several, so I can think of some uses for it. I I would like to. I would like to get a container to um, coke down my coal. Yeah, I know you can do it in a forge, but I'd like to, to avoid as much smoke as I can. I just got another ton of some really, really good Kentucky Blue Anthracite, grade 8. I tried it out the other day. My God, that stuff gets hot. It gets hot and it cokes up like 
like that foam that you spray. And it just turns into like a big, but it just, it burns without, without air. I, in fact, I covered it after I saw what it, what it did and I verified, yeah, it's what it's supposed to do. Um, I had a couple pieces of coal sitting on the fire that, and I shut everything down. I made a cover and I covered it so that, uh, I, the, the, the cover had a hole in it where my exhaust was so that if it did smoke, it would go out the chimney. Went into the house, came back out an hour and a half to lock everything up. And that fire, that room was probably 110 degrees. Well, I know it was because I know what 110 is. I know what 115 is because we have one at work. And it was every bit that. And that, that, that coal had become coat and it was just burning. So steady, so nice. But it shouldn't have. I mean, I don't think it should have because I, I didn't have the air on. So I don't know. I, I'm looking forward to working with it. But the the problem is there there it's got to burn off its volatiles. I mean, there was a point there where I was afraid the neighbors would all complain. I, I had forgotten. I used this stuff before. And I wasn't sure if it was, you know, the good stuff that the guy claimed it was. So then I went and I got a ton of tractor supply just just to uh, compare and there's no comparison I wouldn't buy the tractor supply again I wouldn't take it if you gave it to me but I would mix it maybe uh, the jury's still out on that I'm not one for making caves but this stuff caved too very nicely. Just have to get rid of that soot. Either that or I have to make a better um, hood. I mean with the with the tractor supply stuff, I think that that was more house coal to be burnt in the house. Um so yeah, it was really, really clean. It was clean anthracite, and, but it just turned into ash when it was done. There was no coking at all. So I thought if I had a, you know, like a, I don't know, just your typical metal trash can with a lid, and I just had a coal fire in there, but, but didn't let any air really feed it. Just let it suck it in. Suck it in. I love doing this. I, I, I just love experimenting with this stuff. Now this is this is the blacksmith's goop. I think it's beeswax, um, BLO, boiled linseed oil. Mm, I think that's that's it. It's a little too hot. But I did find out the secret to turning your stuff black. It's not the blacksmith's goop or anything else. Your branches will turn black when you take a rag, a cotton rag, soak it in that stuff and rub it across. It's the burning of the cotton that does it. I can coat that all day and it's not going to turn black. I rub it with a rag and it instantly becomes black. Those little brushes are nice too. Um, they're just little, I think they're called acid brushes. They use them in the shop. I, th I think I've seen people solder or puts, I don't know. I don't know what it was I saw him doing, but they're they're real cheap. You know, and get them in a pack of a hundred. Man, those things held up to the heat. 
I had to use paintbrush and I tried that and all the bristles burnt up on me. Yeah, you see, I'm just going over this and over this and really not, I know it looks like some parts of it are turning black. I think that's just because it's liquid and it just looks black. Over and over and over. Eventually I do break down and get a rag, but I don't know if I show that. I do have some other stuff I wanted to try on it too, just for the heck of it. Um, it's just a black polish, furniture polish, I think. And, and that was after the rag. I didn't really show this tree very well, but thanks for watching.